Dr. Han Football Club was formed over 50 years ago. They play in the Scottish Welfare Football Association. Fourth and Endic Games, which are held, weather permitting, <laughs> on Saturdays and Tuesdays, and now Sundays. Let's have a look at the Field of Dreams. As you can see, Gatos Park isn't exactly level, and in the background, in Crown Hill, known locally as the Dumpling Hill, is a tiny hill of only 465 feet above sea level. However, the very short descent gives a reward out of all proportion to the effort, revealing a fantastic view of Loch Lomond, dotted with its many islands and backed by the great mountains of the Southern Highlands. Well worth the walk. News flash. Gap to finish the season. <laughs> what? Oh. Well, well, what? I think Gina's with some of the boys for the team. Should we go to Gina? Gina, you there? <laughs> Hi, Gina, where are you? Oh. Gina, 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 Gina. <laughs> Thank you, Tom and Ben. It's Gina the Giraffe here. I'm here with Mary. boys from the team to get their thoughts on the season. Hi Gina, it's Graham. Can I say you're looking particularly beautiful today? Oh! Thanks Graham! Need a drink after that! <laughs> but you know I've only got eyes for your Captain Mary. Sorry, Gina. That's no problem, Graham. So how do you feel the season went? The season itself has been good, but pretty frustrating as well. Um, achieved nearly all the goals we tried to do by getting to cup finals and competing for the league. Uh, frustratingly, part was that we only managed to achieve one of those by winning the Telford Cup. Getting beat in the Margaret White and beating the Cameron Cup and just losing out in the league was frustrating and hugely disappointing but we'll aim to bounce back next year and go for it. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just listening to Green McKenzie there. It's not easy, is it? So... Anyway, have you got any stats on Graham Bendy McKenzie? Thanks, Ginger. Are you related to Nicky Henry? You've got the same colour of hair as Nicky. But he'll argue his is strawberry blonde. Some stats on Graham McKenzie this year. Graham has appeared this time out of a possible 22 appearances. Graham McKenzie has appeared 19 times as a starter, sit, um, twice a substitute he managed to amass four goals in that time which is not too bad considering he's played sweeper for the majority of the season however you must mention the penalty kick that he took in the cup final versus Blainfield at Birmingham the, the Margaret White uh, cup final Woeful wouldn't even describe this penalty kick that Graham in fact Woeful's even too nice a word for the penalty kick that Graham McKenzie took that day fucking awful is how I would describe that penalty kick and that's all I've got on Graham McKenzie Thanks for that, Stato. Uh, I don't think I'm related to Nicky. Uh, possibly, possibly, maybe down the line somewhere, but uh, thanks again anyway. Bye. And now to the Capitano. 
Oh, Nicky. Oh, no, it's no use. It's Ginger. How are you doing? Ginger, sorry about that. Just doing a few thousand bad boys. Okay. Hey. How are you doing? Who are you after? Ah, uh, wish people would stop getting me and Nicky mixed up. Hey, sorry, Muri, to interrupt you. Uh, I'm just looking for your, your views on the season. Ah, uh, sorry, Ginger, for calling you, Nicky. I can't. The two of these are so alike. Uh, must be the hair. Anyway. Uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag this season. Probably more lows than highs. Three cup finals, winning one of them uh, and missing out in the league. So I more lows than highs, but getting into the position is what it's all about. But winning's the main achievement. Unfortunately, we never succeeded this year, but I hope it'll be better next year. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, winning's what it's all about, Muri, but... Uh... Never mind, uh, next season, next season. Uh, Stato, Eton, and Muri. Ian Muir this year played 20 games for Gartaham. He missed two of the possible 22 that you can play with being a holiday in Florida. I think it was with Jimmy Savile. In that time, playing from centre half, he's managed to score five goals, which is not, not unnormal for Ian. Ian quite often scores a few goals, normally from corner kicks or free kicks coming in, and he'll, he'll score a header from there. But it's not a bad return from Ian Muir there at centre half. I am. Um, Robert Muir, centre, centre midfielder, number nine. For me this season went fairly well. We missed out at the last minute in most things. Came second in everything, which wasn't good enough. But I think it was a good season for the boys. I think everyone worked hard. We just missed out at the end. Didn't get enough games. Uh, thanks Gina, it's Craig here as you know. Uh, I'm a forward, but my... Uh, my feelings this season are, it was a bit of a let down in the end, with so much promise, but a lot of positives with it as well. Overall this season, uh, I would have to say I'm a wee bit disappointed that we never won um, as many trophies as we, we had last year, given that we were in the running for everything right up until the end. Uh, and the mo the biggest disappointment was the manner in which we lost the league, um, but there's a lot of positives to take as well. Um, the team played arguably the best that we've ever played before. All right, Gina, uh, Scott Mitchell, star striker. Uh, season went pretty well. Uh, disappointed not to come top with that Deanston mob, but maybe uh, Graham McKenzie to blame for that one, but. Uh, no, nah, overall good season. Enjoy. There's a burglar in the house. What's your name, boy? Right, I'm Pooley. Uh, play up for the Big Art Harm. Feelings of the season. Uh, bit gutted we get shattered after Deanson and they end up done. Pooley? Okay then. Done. News flash! Let's go to Gary and Nicky before the first game of the season. <laughs> Gary's my favourite. Oh. Nicky is mine. <laughs> nah, Gary. Nicky. <laughs> Gary, Gary. Oh. Nicky, 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 Nicky. <laughs> Wee! First game of the season, guys. Looking forward to it. Ah, you did a video. Can you break? So, guys, what was your best moment of the season? My best moment of the season 
was either pumping Clern at home, 7 or 8 nil, can't even remember, and absolutely demolishing them and embarrassing them with their full squad, or beating Deanston 7-5 when everyone was talking about them. The worst moment of the year was definitely up at Deanston, didn't go well enough, team didn't play well enough, just an all round poor performance. Hi, Mary. Jens, how are you getting on? Aye, no bad. Uh, do I still do the magic tricks? Aye, now and again. Um, aye, do you want, you want to see the, the coin levitate after? There you go, right, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll do it now. Right. You need to watch closely this time though. Uh, there we go. One, two, three. There we go. Oh, slowly does it. A lot of concentration goes into this. Oh, wait a minute. Like that. I like it. I loved it, Magic Mooney. Hey, what about your moment of the season? And uh, well done again. Thanks, Ginger. Uh, you're looking for my moment of the season. Well, Obviously, collectively as a team, it's got to be the Telford Cup final winning it. Uh, uh, on a personal level, the goal I scored against Balfron, I think it was supposedly, I'm not sure exactly, but between 35 to 45 yards top corner screamer. But uh, that was my moment. Thanks. My most memorable part of the season was scoring against Drummond at the Gaffer. Oh. You got any stats on Pooley? Chris Poole has uh, started three times for Gatlinham this season. He's been used more as an impact substitute, which he does very well, I feel. Um, he's won nine times for Gatlinham. He scored three goals in, in all his appearances, all 12 of them um, this year. I feel I must mention a miss that he had from inside a yard. Um, the bottom goals, I can't remember who it was against down at Gatlinham. But these things are all right. Um, he's got a lot in his mind these days. He's just got a new girlfriend there, and a new car, probably a new haircut and all the rest of it. He's a good looking wee guy. Um, no, that's this, Chris. My most memorable moment of the season, um, from a personal point of view, is way back in the first game of the season, where I looked a bit of a tube by missing a penalty, but only to pop up five minutes from the time to, to nab the winner. So that's a personal memorable point of the season. Hmm, seems the G-Dog seems to have a small issue with the belly kicks. Oh, here's the game coming. Oh, no. Somebody in the road getting a ball. Somebody over that edge and catch a ball. Two, I don't know. No. I don't know if it was between Chinook and the three penalties. No. Four, that's why you're in the right place. That's why you're in the right place. 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 Uh-huh. Sweet timer going to the top. Sure. Right. Hi, Muri. Sorry I can't be there tonight. I'm currently in London. Having a look about. Signs with Arsenal and that kind of thing. Um, my favourite moment for this season has got to be the goal against Vintry. The 10th goal against that famous 10 of it against Vintry. Where I chipped the keeper and off the bar. I thought it was a contender for goal of the season, but apparently Ricky's goal was better in that game. Worst moment's got to be the 10 minute meltdown in the Driven Cup final. I don't know what happened there, but one was not for the next season to be ever. We are Gato. So Stato, you got anything to say about Nicky Henry? Are you sure you've not got anything else? Nicky scored. I say scored. He was the last Garraham player to touch the ball before an own goal was scored for Fintry in a 10 0 drubbing at Garraham. Yeah. Most memorable moment this season uh, would have to be the penalty shootout that we had against Blainfield uh, for the wrong reasons to start off with because I've never seen any team miss more penalties than what we did. But what will really stick is 
Shuggy's performance in the penalty shootout uh, was incredible. I've never the penalty saves that he made were all really high standard goalkeeping and uh, most memorable moment of the season must be breaking old goal virginity for the Garto. Uh, enjoyed that one, didn't eh? Seems a good year for Scott Mitchell. Losing his goal virginity. Virginity chips in Blackpool. Uh, most memorable moments kind of hard because I didn't have a very good season, but it was probably winning the Telfer Cup. But the worst moments quite easy. It was missing the final. Well, having my penalty saved the final one in the Margaret White final, which made me lost. So start with Gregor Mitchell. Gregor Mitchell this season has been involved in every game Gareth Ham's played, be it as a starter or as a substitute. 18 times he started the game and four times as a substitute and he's amassed seven goals this season. Some would argue that's maybe not enough for Gregor. Gregor strives to be the best he can be at everything he does, absolutely everything. He's so dynamic, he's so authoritative and he just never shuts up. And the thing about Gregor is he, he will want more than seven goals and I can guarantee you that next year that will be his target, at least double figures, Gregor. Uh, worst point of the season have to be Gregor's terrible penalty miss uh, dragging the family name right down uh, really he disowned now uh, don't want anything to do with him uh, I just ashamed him So Stato have you got any stats on the little dancing queen Scott Mitchell Scott Mitchell's been there near enough every game this year if not every game this year and he's come on as a substitute four times he's not no managed to start a game this season but that I'm sure will all change um, as I say, he's, started, he's come on as a sub four times and he managed to get his, his first ever goal for Garraham this season against Fintry down at Garraham near the end of the season. Uh, it was a great achievement for young Scott. The uh, worst moment of the season would be uh, missing a sitter from my yard against Kilham in the semi final. Uh, the biggest disappointing part of the season was that we got defeated in the Camel Cup final against our lovely rivals, Drimmon. It's always a sore one. And uh, also, just equally on that, is the way that the league kind of ended and the disappointing fact that we never really get a chance to fulfil the chance to, to try and win it. This season is uh, obviously, from a personal point of view, was getting injured so early on in the season and not being able to uh, play any of the games this year was um, really disappointing. But it's in the past, I'm not going to do a Gray McKenzie and get the wee violin out. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because I know I'm going to be back next year. So I look forward to that. Most on. This is all getting a wee bit depressing, Mary Boy. Want a wee song? Ah, uh, why not, Ginger? One and a two, we're going to rock it for you. Three and a four, we're going to rock it down for. Five and six, they're just going to do the mix. And a seven and eight, we're going to rock real late. Well in, Muri boy, and well in, Muri Junior. So which player would you say is most under the thumb? Do you know that? Come on, do you know that's a bit of a tough question to ask. Um, a few candidates, but let me think. Maybe... John McQueen. Hmm. And the team under the thumb. Uh, I would go. I would say. If you, uh, Shuggy Wiley, definitely. If you look closely, you'll see a small fingerprint just just about this area on Shug. Uh, definitely Shuggy Wiley. Uh, I think John McQueen's got potential though. He's got potential to be a thumb dinner. Uh, Ricky Davidson, you know, came at Blackpool. Most under the thumb would be Nicky Henry. Uh, he's only recently started going out with his new girlfriend and has taken on the role of landscape gardener already. Recently he was, had to do a 40 mile round trip with a lawnmower in the back of Phil's van, which I thought was utterly unheard of until he told me, so yeah. Well done, Nicky. Yeah, most under the thumb. It can't be Gregor anyway. He struggles to try and even talk to birds. Uh, I'd have to say probably Shuggy. Never see Shuggy at all. He needs to start coming out with the boys.
think the player that's most under the thumb has definitely got to be Bendy, Graham McKenzie. He is serious. Every night I'm trying to sleep and I can't actually sleep for him giving it. Love you, baby. <laughs> you mean more to me than I mean to you. I love you. Bye. So definitely Graham McKenzie. Uh, I don't know, there's a few culprits in the team, but uh, I have noticed sometimes when I'm running down the wing that I tend to lose focus because we play boys don't they say they've barked on these buds falling. Right guys, which player is the biggest lightweight? Easy, Shuggy Wiley, Shadow Flair and Blackpool. Uh, biggest lightweight, probably Shuggy Wiley. The one night I've actually seen him out and about 6 o'clock in the afternoon he's absolutely wrecked, can't even talk. So, uh, Shuggy Wiley, definitely. And also, anyone who has a shite in their own room has to be the biggest lightweight, I think, Shuggy. The biggest lightweight in the team has to be Callum McInnes. Two pints, he's Emdy's. Three pints, and he's Roddy's. That's a difficult one. Um, I could say the opposite way. There's quite a folk, number of folk who'll keep going until the end, but the biggest lightweight, I would think, is maybe Nicky Henry and I've got a couple of good pictures to prove that. The biggest lightweight I would say in the team, uh, well we Scotty Mitchell, he goes off like a train and then uh, dies a death but midnight after he's pulled Dan straight out of his head. Uh, but number one slot's easy for me, Hugh Wiley. Uh, I mean, uh, dumping in the middle of the floor one thing but dumping in the middle of the floor when your roommates are sleeping nah, it's not right no right why right that's no right no right biggest lightweight in the team is definitely myself this can of kestrel over here nine percent volume 500 mil can would be enough to do me for three nights out yeah, that's an easy one. Uh, Huey Wiley, you can't go about shining in your room. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> okay guys, next question. If you were called up to Iraq, what three players would you take and why? Uh, first person I'd probably take to Iraq would maybe Gregor. For any buds that I've seen over there, you're still next to Gregor, you're going to look ten times better, aren't you? Uh, sickle, I'd probably take Sickle with me and all for the banter. And also, he's a wee bit experienced in it and all. And I think the last person I'd ever take would be Graham McKenzie anyway. Just for the sheer abuse that he'd give you. Uh, that's how I'd take, would or wouldn't he take anyway. If I was called up to Iraq and I had to choose three players to come with me, I think it would have to be Gary Moore, because he would back me up no matter what, he'd always have my back. Ian, because he's my brother, and he should have my wee brother right enough, but he should have my back. And Dougie Wilson for the crack. Well, I would probably take first my wee flatmate Bert because I know he could cook for me if he got hungry he'll whip up some fancy meal out in the desert somehow with something um, secondly I'd probably take Nicky Henry purely for the fact is that he's got a brass neck and if we ever get some time off he could lag us into some nightclubs to the VIP bit um, and probably Dougie Wilson because he's patters better than yours uh, if I was going to take three, I'd take three big guys, so I'd take Big Brian, uh, Gary Moore, and Big Callum McInnes, so I could hide that in them. But I definitely wouldn't take Graham, couldn't you listen to that shite out in that act. Uh, three players I'd take would be Gregor Mitchell, because he's funny. That's gay, can't you have, man? <laughs> Come on, bully. Try again. Give yourself a shake. Yeah, I'd take Gregor, because he's hilarious. Uh, Muri, because he's hard as nails. And Simon Henry, so I've got a, a timer can bully. Uh, if 
I was sent to Iraq and I could only bring three players. I would first of all have to bring Matt Henry because I could use him as my stunt double. I would bring Scott Mitchell because his pasty white skin looks like it could use a bit of sun. And I would also bring Graham McKenzie because one of his short stories could help put the Iraq war into perspective. Thanks a lot boys for your time. I wish you all the best for the 2013 season. Go Gato! Cheers Gina, over and out. Right Gina, thanks a lot, see you again. Breaking news, Hammy Stewart is wanting a word. <laughs> What's up? <sighs> nah, he's just wanting to talk about the season. <laughs> Let's see what he's got to say. This year's season, uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, to compete in every cup final, winning one, and to take the, the league basically to a meeting to decide that certain games were going to be played and they lost out by a point. Um, just after the Cameron Cup final, I found it quite frustrating and thought it was a very disappointing season. And I think that's simply because we have such high expectations after last season. I think probably every other team in the league would have been delighted to have been in the position we were in. So I think it gives us something very positive to take forward next year. And the only thing I would say that we could improve on as a whole is maybe just to finish a wee bit better, be a wee bit more clinical in front of goals. And that goes for every player, not just our, our strikers, but our midfielders and even guys like Nicky Henry who sometimes run up the park and only score once in a season. But we've got to love with these things. So there we have it, season and one. Let's get a supporters view. It was good, some games I've seen, our games at Graham Chester Morning face. Who is the best player you've seen this year? Ian Muir. <coughs> Who's the biggest moan in the sidelines? I think moans the most is Sonny Stewart. All seems to be picking Graham and Bird. Oh, you starting? <laughs>